Gotta do your highs and your lows, babies. This vlog made 532. It's really good for your heart. It's one way to wake up. Slept okay? It's kind of hard to sleep when you've got a little leopard running across you all night. She was a little bit hyperactive. I don't know why she didn't sleep. I think it might have been the fan. I ran the fan. I actually took some footage of that. What is that air? What is it doing? Where's that breeze coming from? Where is it? Where is it coming from? Why, why does it feel like that? I don't think she's ever seen a fan before, so. Also, is that like a street cleaner that happened to just come by right when I decided to start filming? Yep. It's like 10 a.m. It's after 10 a.m. now. I got up at about 10. I finally put in my noise-canceling earbuds at about 8 or something like that. I finally was like, well, let's try this. And that worked. It didn't work when she, you know, walked across my throat so much, but it did work for all the background noise of her playing with toys and things like that, so. Yeah. I'm packing up. I'm going to go to Oni, get some coffee. Uh, and write, because that's one of the things we're on top of. I've got a couple other things I'd really like to get on top of as well, so I'm hoping to just have a day sitting at the computer working, mostly. Um, partially because I just need to keep relaxing as well, which I don't know if that sounds relaxing, but having coffee and just kind of getting some stuff done sounds nice. Anyhow, just packing up, grabbing my cables and stuff, and we're out of here. The other thing is then we have to trick her. Well, I don't have to, but she likes to try to get out of the house. She wants to go out in the hallway, so I throw a toy for her and then, and then I exit. It's my trick. Nope. Or put her up in a high place like this. This might work too. Give her a second to hesitate. And voila. We've snuck away. They look super closed, largely because they are... Ah, oh, they're closed until the third. <laughs> no. Beirut is right, they need to start calling places in advance. All right, well, oh no, Strata doesn't allow laptops on the weekends. Crud. What do we do from here? I haven't eaten yet either. This is getting desperate. Not Mark Twain. I know you're thinking it's Mark Twain. It's not Mark Twain. At least that's what I thought. Okay, 10 Bells is open. They're the only ones that are. I, and I asked 10 Bells if they would allow laptops and she said yes. So we're gonna trust that. We're gonna go, gonna double check. I mean, I'm still gonna get coffee probably, but then hopefully they don't betray me in the end. Also, I hope I'm walking, in the, I'm pretty sure I'm walking in the right direction. I wanna look into that. That was a lot of fun. I saw Damon, who I don't know if you guys know Damon from Damon and Joe, ran into him really quickly, which was random. And then Nathan, the guy that I was talking to for a really long time, we had a lot in common. And actually, he's, he's a professional voice actor. Like, he's like, years. He does voice acting as well as some other acting. And he just had lots of great advice, including some good spots to go for beer and shawarma, which is where we're gonna go next is to get a shawarma for lunch. But Nathan, if you see this, really nice to meet you. Really looking forward to going out and hanging out and learning so much more from me because you obviously know what you're doing. Anyways, shawarma. Looks like the place, Le Cour de Liban. Looks like it. He says right after the burger place. And look at it, it's a heart, a Lebanese heart. Ah. It's been a while since I've explained my love affair with shawarmas, but basically I've discovered Lebanese food, shawarmas in particular, in Sierra Leone, I think? West Africa. And there's, it's very different. The shawarmas that you pick up in West Africa are generally going to be, I mean, different because of what you can get. But Lebanese food is 
everywhere. Any country you go to, you'll find a good Lebanese restaurant. My favorite Lebanese restaurant in the world is in Point Noir, Congo. Their shawarma at La Pacha. <laughs> Probably never get back there, but if I do go back there, oh man, I can't wait. So everything comes down to the garlic more than anything, but the styles are always different. All that matters is that it's delicious. That's all I'm here for, I'm hoping that it's delicious. Cause I know it's not gonna be the same as what you find in West Africa, but it doesn't matter. It's gonna be good. So shawarma, if you're not familiar, Lebanese, it's like a Lebanese meat burrito with a garlic sauce and it's amazing. So much garlic. Oh, Nathan, thank you for pointing me this direction. I was not planning on having a shawarma today and this is a great surprise. Well, that was tasty. I think I'm gonna have garlic in my mouth for the next week after that. Whew, it was good. So, Cour du Liban, I think. It was really good. I would definitely recommend it. The shawarma was delicious. Uh, it was crispy and tasty and good. If I ever find one that's in the same style as West Africa, I'll let you know. And I'm hoping, when we go to Cameroon in April, the hope is that we can introduce you to the West African style because not a huge difference, it's a notable difference and it's delicious. So this is still really, really good. So I found two good shawarmas in Paris so far. I'm happy to find more as we go. Anywho, shawarma down. This is where I was gonna go, El Guacamole. They make a really good burrito, actually. So we've been here before with Rachel, and I think once before that too, uh, but El Guacamole, if you're looking for a decent burrito in town, I really do like their burritos. With no further ado, I think it's time that we go back to the apartment, get our gear, and go for a run. I'm gonna run this shawarma off. But they're really nice. At that Lebanese place, they were super friendly. One of the reasons I really like this neighborhood too is like, They've been open for 20 years. You know, meeting Nathan, he's been here for 17 years. Like, everybody kind of knows each other around here because they've been here for a while, which is true of anywhere, I guess, but there's just a sense of friendly neighborhoodliness. And they, when I told them that I was a YouTuber, because they're like, oh, you can take some photos, and I, uh, you know, that's one thing I need to get better about, is finding that right balance between just filming when I go into a place and asking permission as I go. But we talked a little bit, and they looked me up on YouTube and subscribed right there, because they were actually really like, oh, this is really exciting. So, really, really nice to meet them. Really nice little Lebanese spot. Definitely, if you're looking for a shawarma and you're near Republique, oh, I'll be back. I want more shawarma. I can't fit any more inside me right now, but I want more shawarma. Nakete. Nakete. No, this isn't working as well as my coat. Back. Back, Kete. That method of keeping the cat inside works way better with a heavy jacket. I mean, it worked. That's how I keep her from uh, running, you know, out into the hallway. How, how do you like my hat askew? Uh, it was a four mile run, just around a 10 minute pace, so still kind of miserable, but we'll get there. Yeah, lots of hill in that one, which is good. Yeah, it feels good. Glad I finally got out there. Now I actually need to get to work. I was nothing but social this morning. I really didn't get anything done, so. But I can't work here, because she'll literally crawl on top of me the entire time I'm trying to work while I'm here. So I gotta find a spot to go sit somewhere else, because unlike Cheryl, I'm very easily distracted by the cat, and we'll just start playing with her. Not good for productivity. You are very, you're very needy. What were you saying? Did you have something you wanted to say to the camera? Not now that I'm paying attention to you, fine. As soon as we stop paying attention to her, she won't be fine anymore. So anyways, I'm gonna shower, start some laundry, go find somewhere to sit. All right, I actually got a lot of my editing done. I still need to sit down and get like other work done, but I figured that I'd do that while the laundry went, because it'd probably make more sense to at least get the laundry out and drying before I left. Efficiency, still going. I have no idea how long this is gonna go for. It's done a couple spin cycles already, so it could be that it's done soon, or it could be that it's like another hour. You'll also notice, well maybe you can't see it from there, I sort of spilled shawarma juice on the pants. You'll notice the pants, not in the wash, because they're my only pair of pants. And that's because I've only got three more days to go 
roughly before national sales and I can buy a new pair of jeans. These are really gone and you can see like they're disintegrating. They are about to fall completely apart. If we make it, we are just barely going to make it and they're gonna be in rough shape. Is it done? No. Okay, we're gonna, I'm, let, let's get out of here. I, I don't really want to, I mean, I could do one of the Mexican places by myself, but it's uh, obviously after what we saw last night, not gonna be a spot where you can work. Indiana, believe it or not, for being a chain, has probably the best nachos that I've had in Paris so far, which isn't really saying much, but I've been craving them, obviously. Figured, why not? And I think they'll let me sit with my laptop for a bit. If they don't, I need to eat because I, you know, went for a run and haven't eaten yet. And then we'll just figure it out from there. I might just go home and go to bed. That sounds pretty amazing too, actually. The nachos weren't as good as I remember. I'm not sure why. Natasha may have insight into that, but that's where we went, hung out, had nachos that one time. And they're still sadly the best, I think probably the best nachos in Paris. Okay, so I uh, need to go do a live stream of the Latin Quarter, which you guys should all know by now because it's already on the channel. If you wanna be involved in voting on what kind of things I do on these live streams, where I go in Paris, what I eat, all of that, you can do so on Patreon. If you wanna support me on Patreon, just visit their links everywhere. There'll be a link at the end of the video. There's one in the description right below. For as little as a dollar a month, you can vote on what I eat every month. And then for $3 a month, you can vote on stuff like what we're about to do now. Once I start live streaming though, I won't be able to film anymore, so the vlog will kind of have a gap there. So if you didn't see it yet, go check out the live stream now, and then you can see what it is you could have been a part of. Well, what you could have been a part of deciding where I go. Everybody can be a part of the actual event itself. Let me show kind of at the heart of the Latin Quarter. Ah. What is the heart of the Latin Quarter? I don't know. I'm actually not as familiar with the left bank as I wish I was, but it's a really nice fountain, really fun little area, and well worth our while. Of course, we're not gonna go to Notre Dame, which is right close to it, because Notre Dame's not technically in the Latin Quarter, but again, what is and is not the Latin Quarter? Who knows? So this is the fountain of the Archangel Michael. Slaying some demon with a sword because that's what you do. I mean, why not when you're the archangel? Anyways, live stream time. Go check that out if you want. I think we'll just leave it here for tonight. If you haven't subscribed yet, please just subscribe. I'd love to see you on board. It'd be great to have you around. Leave a comment, like, you know, whatever you feel like doing. And I'll see you again tomorrow morning, bright and early or late at night, depending on where you are. If you're in Australia, it'll be late at night. Bye.